Good morning, welcome back to another vlog. Today we are in Luxor in the southern part of Egypt. We are here to see more temples and the famous Valley of the Kings. We took the overnight train here from Cairo, which was an adventure in and of itself. Yesterday when we got here, we got totally inundated with people trying to give us rides. We even have someone pretend to be a police officer to try to give us a ride. So we spent the day just resting, acclimating to the area. So we're trying to get to several different like tombs and temples today and everything is spread out by about 10 miles. So it's a little bit too far to try and walk the entire thing. So we're gonna try and get a taxi driver to drive us around all day. We were actually talking to a couple of friends that we met on the overnight train and they said that they were able to get a taxi driver to agree to drive them around all day for only 400 pounds. So that's what we're shooting for today. We're only gonna use them for about half the day because we're gonna just do the east side of Luxor on our own. We're just gonna walk that because it's a little bit closer. However, we do need them to drive us around the west side. So what most people do when they come to Luxor is they do hire like a tour guide or a tour group to lead them around all of the West Bank and most of Luxor itself. However, that's pretty expensive. We are trying to save some costs. So, you know, instead of paying 30 US dollars per person to have that tour guide, we're just going to be paying that taxi driver about 16 US dollars for the two of us to drive us around all day and still get pretty much the same experience. We've done a lot of reading on our own to kind of like learn about stuff. That way, you know, we're not missing a lot of information as we're going about these sites. Our Airbnb stay is on the West Bank. There is a public ferry that will take you across the Nile for only five Egyptian pounds per person. On your walk there, however, you will be harassed by tons of different boat drivers trying to give you a ride. We were the only tourists on the public ferry boat because I think all the other tourists did take these boat drivers up on their offers. But I will tell you the lowest price is on the public ferry. So if you stay strong, you will get a low price to get across the Nile River. Now we're on the main road. We already have people asking us for rides, but we're gonna go try to find a car. All right, so we just got done talking to the taxi guy. It seems like he must have several different people that work underneath of him because the guy I was talking to actually handed us off to a driver. And so we just hopped in the van. We agreed on the price of 220 Egyptian pounds per person or 440 total, which is 40 pounds more than I was hoping. But I mean, honestly, that's only like $1.25. The real question is if that's actually the final price at the end of the day, I do expect to have to pay a tip. Um, you know, we had a Airbnb host tell us that most people do work for tips. It's pretty much expected. So that's fine. You know what, we will tip them as long as they do well, but I just hope the actual final price that they give us is the 440. We'll see how today goes. First up is the Valley of the Kings. Our taxi driver is actually gonna go home and shower because he works on the hot air balloons early in the morning. So he got done like sending off hot air balloons and then came into town to start driving around people. So he gave us his number so we could just call him. So hopefully he comes back, but I guess we haven't paid him anything. So if it doesn't come back, it was a free ride out here. But we're gonna go start checking out the Valley of the Kings. Yeah, change for this. So when you come here to Luxor, your general ticket gets you into three different tombs. And this map actually shows you all the different tombs there are. However, there's only a few that are actually open today. There was about a selection of eight or so. So we chose three of those eight. Today we're for sure going to do tomb eight and tomb 11. And then depending on how far we want to go and how we're feeling, we'll decide on our last one later on. we're going into number eight. It was from the 19th dynasty. Howard Carter discovered it in the early 1900s. So we're gonna go check that one out first. This 
tomb is honestly so big and there's hieroglyphs on the walls all the way down. It's really incredible. It's also really hot in here. There's no airflow. A tip would be to get up super, super early because all the tour buses are here at quarter to nine. We were a little lazy and didn't get our butts out of bed as early as we would have liked. But just be prepared. There is some really big morning crowds. But that did not take away from the hieroglyphs that were inside of tomb number eight. It was truly incredible. They had a tomb inside that you could look at. But honestly, for me, it was the hieroglyphs and the paintings on the ceilings and the walls. That was truly incredible. We're here in December, so the temperature is about 60 degrees, 65 degrees, and it's honestly perfect. I can't imagine how sizzling it is out here in the summer, but in December, I have to say the temps could not be more enjoyable for walking around the hot, dusty desert. But now we're going to go check out a couple more and continue to walk through the valley. So we just finished our time here. We're back at the visitor center. We found out that these tickets are good for a round trip so you can hop right back on those scooters and they'll zip you right back to the visitor center. When we were in the second tomb, out of nowhere, this man started yelling at us and telling us that we could not have our microphone, that it was not allowed. However, nowhere do we see a sign that said that it was not allowed. There's no signage saying no microphones. None of the guards said there's no microphones. None of the people giving us um, an entrance and punching our tickets so we couldn't have it. And another man walking by told us you're fine you're fine but this man was yelling at us so loud in the tomb that we just took it off put it away and kept going there's also people in the tombs that are workers that are trying to get money to take your pictures they're trying to get money to take you into extra portions that cost extra money so even inside the tombs you have to be on full alert for the scams here they really are everywhere here it definitely detracts from the experience when you're being hassled all the time but you really have to be on guard even inside the tombs I've heard if you come with a tour guide it's better that they'll leave you alone but if you're travelers like us that don't have a tour guide and are just doing our best out here definitely be on full alert now our driver should be on his way to come pick us up as we're going to continue there's a lot more to see here in Luxor Next, we're at Hatshepsut's temple, which is behind me. You can remember it because it sounds like hot chicken soup. We just paid our entrance fee and we walked here to the temple, very walkable. Again, they are offering their shuttle services. And at the entrance of every major site, they make you funnel through a market where people are trying to sell things to you. Just make sure that no one puts anything into your hand because then it's game over. They're gonna make you pay them. So just keep your hands to yourself, walk right through, you'll be okay but you'll definitely get hassled coming in and out. And now we're in this beautiful site. The sun came out, so it's super toasty, but we're gonna check out this beautiful temple while we are here.
So between South America and even Turkey, we were doing really good at avoiding crowds, like visiting the places during the off season. However, here in Egypt, it has not been that same. There are a lot of people here. I don't know if it is off season here, but regardless, there are just thousands of people here. There are thousands of people at the Kings Valley. So it's been very busy and very crowded here. So we just got <laughs> done calling our driver who's on his way. And next we're heading over to Menenat Habu, which is another temple that we're gonna check out. All right, so right now we're at the Habu Temple. This is actually the quietest place we've been to so far. The Valley of the Kings is super busy, and Queen Hapshut's temple is super busy as well, but this place seems pretty quiet. We actually found a little area where we're like the only people back there, so it's nice just to have like an entire little room that we could check out with no one else around. But we're gonna continue checking this out before we head back over to the east side of the Nile. We're hopping back on the public ferry to head on over to the east side to go check out the Karnak Temple. Right now we are at the Karnak Temple. It's one of the largest temples here in Egypt. It's very close to the Luxor Temple, and they're actually connected by a road that's referred to as the Avenue of Sphinxes. The Karnak Temple is one of the largest religious complexes here in Egypt, and it was built in honor of the Egyptian god Amun-Ra, as well as Khonshu and some other gods. Honestly, I don't know a lot of Egyptian history. A lot of it comes from the latest Marvel show, Moon Knight, where they talk about Khonshu. So not a great source of information regarding the Egyptian gods. There are plenty of tour guides to offer to take you around and explain more of the information to you. We opted just to read some signs and are learning as we go. The complex is over 200 acres so there's a lot to go cover today so we're gonna go check it out. So there are over 130 of these massive pillars all within this area. They were built to apparently look like reeds, like reeds that grow along the bank of the Nile, which is pretty cool. They are totally massive. I know the Greeks are known for making columns, but the Egyptians sure knew how to build some columns themselves because these are massive and they're decorated with hieroglyphs on the outside. So really cool to walk through and check out. We hope you enjoyed this quick look at what a day in Luxor can look like but stay tuned as we are going to be doing another tour tomorrow in Luxor and it's all about food, so make sure you stay tuned for that.